Hi, in today's video, we're going to make Flappy Bird. Not the entire thing, but we're going to get started on making Flappy Bird fly. So here's an almost completed project where we've got pipes going, Flappy Bird responds to key presses. Our goal today is just to get the key presses to work. So when you press the up arrow, Flappy Bird pops up in the air and does a flying motion according to a little parabola. So that's our goal. All right, to start off, we need to make a new Greenfoot project. So go ahead and go to Greenfoot. If you see a project open like I have one here, go to Scenario and close the current project. Then choose Scenario and New and name your project. I'm going to call mine Flappy Bird Day 1. Flappy Bird Day 1. Create. Cool. So, so far we have no world and no actors. So we need to add both. So first for world, right click world, choose new subclass. Let's call this Flappy World. Then for images, import a file and go to the folder where you downloaded the sample images and choose Flappy Bird Background. Select that and compile. Cool. All right, now let's add Flappy Bird. Right click actor, new subclass. We'll call him Flappy Bird. Once again, import the file that was downloaded. And Flappy Bird is our image. Let me reset my window a bit so you can see the compile button down there. Compile. All right. So we have a Flappy Bird object. We have a Flappy Bird world. And then we need to add our Flappy Bird object to the world. So go ahead and open up world by double clicking it. Once again, let me reset my window so we can see this. There we go. So this is our Flappy Bird world. It's a 600 by 400 size world where each cell is one pixel. And for now, we'll always leave it at one pixel. All right, we need to do two things. First, we need to create a Flappy Bird object. And to do that, we'll say Flappy Bird, and then we'll name him Flappy, whatever you like, equals new Flappy Bird. Check. Now that he's been created, we need to add him to the world. So add Flappy to our world. And to do that, we use the add object command. And we say the object name, in our case, Flappy is the actual object. Then you pass in an X and a Y coordinate where you want Flappy to be. In our case, let's put him at 100 units from the left-hand edge, and then halfway on the screen. Since the height is 400, 200 is directly vertically centered. But instead of hard coding 200, let's do this a better way. Let's say get height, then divide it by two. That'll automatically put Flappy Bird at half the height, no matter what size the screen is. That's much better code. So let's compile this and see if our bird is where it wants to be. There it is, cool. And next, we need to discuss how to make Flappy Bird actually fly. So here's what we're going to do. The first thing you need to understand to make Flappy Bird fly like an actual um, parabolic motion that he has is to know that gravity pulls according to the square of time. What I mean is this. If this is a ball, after one second, maybe it falls only one foot. After two seconds, it will fall two feet. After three seconds, nine feet, way down there. Here's a zoomed out version. The ball starts off here. At first it falls a little bit then a lot more, then a lot more, then way, way, way more, way down there. But each time it goes, the ball speeds up and loses more and more and more and more every single time. It's speeding up and getting faster as it goes down. Here's the physics equation. All you care about is that it's a parabola. It's the square of time that matters. And we'll see this in a little bit here. All right, if gravity was linear, Here's what would happen. After, so down here, this axis, this is time. And our vertical axis is height. And what we're saying in this picture is that after one axe step, Flappy Bird will lose two units of height. That's his dy. So dy changes by two units in this situation. After the next interval of time, which is one axe step, Again, Flappy Bird will lose two units of height. And each time 
he goes to act, he'll lose two units. So horizontally, these represent little act steps. After another act step, he loses two units, and so on. So this is a linear motion. Here's the pseudocode. You'd have a global variable to keep track of how much height Flappy Bird loses every act step. And in the act step, all you do is move him by dy. In this case, it means, hey, take Flappy Bird and change his y value by two every time. That moves him down by two, down by two, down by two, and so on. So let's code this up in our game and get linear gravity to start with. Go ahead and open up Flappy Bird by double clicking him. Once again, let me set this up by resizing my window. There it is. All right, first, let's add our global variable for dy. So int dy equals uh, two. The reason I'm using positive two is because remember, in the Greenfoot world, it's just like code HS. Zero, zero is the upper left corner, x is positive to the right, and y is positive going downward. So when I say dy equals two, what I really mean is that five is gonna go down by positive two units. So positive two is downward, remember that. All right, back to our code. So we have dy is two, cool. And now every single time we act, we want to simply move by dy amount. So we'll use set location. Now for the x-coordinate, I want the same x-coordinate as we had before. So to find our x-coordinate, just use get x. That way it sets the x-coordinate to whatever it was before. But for the y-coordinate, we'll get our y-coordinate and we'll add to that dy. And what this will do is it'll take our current position and it'll move us by two more. So let's go back to uh, the main menu, compile and run this. And you can see now that Flappy Bird is losing, well gaining in this case, it's changing its dy by two every time, or it's changing its position by two. But that looks very strange. This is what you'd have if the gravity was linear. Things would float to the ground at a constant speed. It looks very, very strange. So let's go back to our PowerPoint and discuss what gravity really does. So gravity is not linear, it's quadratic. That means this, the first time, let me set up a bunch of dy's here. All right, the first time we go through, after one act step, at first dy is one. So let's put a one here. But the next time through, when you change dy, look at this, it's three units. It changes it by more because the gravity is speeding up the object. The next time we act, right here, dy changes by one, two, three, four, five units. And then next time, the dy changes by seven units. So look at the pattern here. There's a change of two in dy every time. And this change right here from here to here is a change of two. And again, a change of two. This is your gravity constant. You can always change this. If you want more gravity, instead of by twos, change it by threes or by fours or by something bigger. So this here, this is our gravity constant. And so what we need to add to our program is the ability to change dy and have it increase over time so that gravity pulls our object down farther and farther. So in code, it looks like this. It's the same code as we had before, but now you have gravity. And so in addition to moving dy, or by moving the object by amount of dy, we're also going to increase dy by gravity. That way at first it's one, then plus two more, plus two more, plus two more, the dy keeps changing to become stronger and stronger, which pulls our object down more and more. So let's go ahead and code this up, open up the Flappy Bird code, and now let's add gravity. So int g, I'm gonna say it equals two. Let's set dy to zero so that by default he's stopped. And then now the only thing to change here is to make sure that dy is updated. So dy equals its old self, plus gravity. That way we're increasing the strength of dy. So let's compile this. Uh, oops, that should be int dy or g. Okay, compile, run. And now you've got 
Fat Bird is falling down faster and faster. It looks much better. And here's something fun you can do to play around. Check this out. If I put negative 10 here, what do you think that'll do? This will give Flappy Bird an initial velocity of negative 10. That means he'll be shooting up in the air with a force of 10 units, but eventually the gravity is going to pull him back down. So check this out. Compile this. Flappy Bird has a little bit of a launch. Do you see him launching up in the air there? Let's change our, gra our initial boost to uh, instead of negative 10, how about negative 20? Let's try that out. Cool. So there's a boost of negative 20, but since we're adding two to gravity, eventually the twos add up and it pulls them back down to um, a positive speed. So there's the basics of getting parabolic motion. And now let's add a few uh, tweaks here. All right. One tweak we want to make to our program is that uh, Flappy Bird doesn't respond to key presses. So now let's make it so that when you press the up arrow, you launch Flappy Bird up in the air by whatever amount you want, and that way we can keep him bouncing. So let's go to the Flappy Bird code. Here's mine. Now when we press the up arrow, we want to launch Flappy Bird up in the air. So here, we will say, actually, you know, where we put some matters, actually. Um, I'm going to say after setting his location, we're going to update it here. So let's say if we press a key press, let's do pseudocode first. If user presses up arrow, then launch a flappy bird upward. All right, so how do we do key presses? Well, go to the help menu of the main Greenfoot window, choose Greenfoot class documentation. And then the first option there, second option is Greenfoot class. Click on that and it takes you to the general Greenfoot class. So inside here is what you need for key presses. And the key that we want is here. Is key down is the function name that we want. So the way this works is you pass in a string that represents the key name. In this case, the key names are here. There's strings um, up, down, left, right. Those are the only things we need for now. So I went ahead and copied this is key down and I'm going to go ahead and use that in my code. So we're going to say if and then copy and paste this in. Now to use this function, this is important. This is, comes from the Greenfoot class. And static, when a method is static, it means that you can tell a class name to do that method. So to run all of these static functions, you have to say Greenfoot dot whatever function name it is. So for us to run this, we have to say Greenfoot dot, uh, sorry, this goes in the front, Greenfoot dot is key down. Greenfoot dot is key down. We need to pass in the name of the key as a string, in our case, up. And it returns a Boolean, true or false, if that key is being pressed at the time. So if we're pressing up, then we would like to change dy and make dy equal, let's say, a boost of negative 20. So let's start Flappy Bird off at zero velocity. But when we press the up arrow, it boosts them up in the air. So let's try this out. Compile, run. Awesome. As I'm pressing the up arrow, it's launching Flappy Bird upward. From here, you can make tweaks and you can uh, play with the numbers. So let's play with the numbers a little bit. Now, here's one thing. This is way too fast. This, this would not be a fun game. This would be like impossible bird. So let's adjust our constants to something a lot better. So let's say gravity. Well, I can only go to one. Let's see how that works. That's better. It's more floaty. Now he's launching way too high in the air. So let's change that to something different. His launch speed of negative 20 was way too much. How about negative? Let's try 10. 
I think it's not enough in this case. Maybe it's something more than 10, but still it's the right kind of motion. Now, at some point, you're probably going to want to have decimal numbers because if your choices are 1, 2, 3, that's not very precise. So let's change these to doubles. A double is a decimal in Java. Now here's the problem. If you compile, Java complains that set location requires integers. So get x is already an integer, but the problem is that now, now that we changed dy to be a double, this calculation is a decimal, and it has to be an integer to be accepted into set location. So here's a trick. In Java, you can convert one type to another by typecasting. So to typecast, you surround the calculation in parentheses. There's that. So surround the calculation in parentheses. Then in front, also in parentheses, you say the new data type. In our case, we want to convert this calculation in parentheses into an integer. As long as you use parentheses in both spots, the new data type and the calculation, it'll convert from one data type to another. So let's compile this, and now we can say gravity is actually 1 point, say, 3. And when we launch, let's launch by negative maybe 15. Try this out. All right. That's definitely better. So up arrow, this feels more like the actual Flappy Bird. So play with the numbers, see what you get. All right. The next thing we want to do is see how Flappy Bird is stopping at the edge of the screen. That's not what we want. We want Flappy Bird to be able to go past the edge of the screen. So to do this, we need an unbounded world. Back to help, back to Greenfoot class documentation. Then under world, here are the constructors. A constructor is basically how you set up an object or a world. In this case, we've been using this constructor where we passed in the width of the world, the height, and then the cell size, which was always one for us. But there's a second constructor right here where you can pass in an additional parameter, bounded. Now, what bounded represents is if you say true or false, that's whether or not the entire world has a boundary or whether or not you can go past the boundary. So to have an unbounded world, we want this to be false. So let's go to our Flappy Bird world code, open that up, and here's where we set up the world. Let's say false. That way we'll have an unbounded world. And if we go back and compile this, Flappy Bird is now allowed to go below the screen edge. So check this out. If you let him fall for a little bit, it takes a while to actually bring him back. And you can also go above the edge of the world, too. This is what we want. All right, so it's looking much better. So there's the basis of Flappy Bird. The next things to do are to review the homework. So here's your homework. Part of it's required, part of it is optional. All right, required homework. When Flappy Bird reaches the bottom of the screen, stop the game and print game over by using the command system out print line, game over. When you complete this part, here's what it looks like. When Flappy Bird goes below the edge of the screen, game over appears in the console and the world stops. If I press up arrow, nothing happens because the world is stopped automatically. Here are some hints for you to get it started. So, these will be on my web page, and you can review them as you need. All right, an additional feature that's optional, at least for now, is instead of printing game over, display the game over image on the console. It looks like this. This time, instead of printing to this console, game over appears as a new actor right in the middle of the screen. That's way cooler. So there's your optional homework. All right, that's it for today. Have fun. See you next time.